Hello, my name is Mike Gaben and welcome to Making History Mission 6. This is the series in which we are going through each of the missions that are packed along with the Making History DLC for Kerbal Space Program and, well, doing the best that we can with each of them. And today it is Munar 1. Uh, we are going to be putting as the Kerbal, as the Images implies we're going to finally be putting some Kerbals on the moon. My first round through, well, I didn't kill anybody who raved for that. And I got a silver, but I know exactly where it is that I went wrong, and we'll get to that very shortly. So, well, hopefully this time it will be a goal, but we'll see how it goes. Okay, all our lunar research has led us to this point. You are about to make history again. Your objective this time is simple. Build a spacecraft and land on the moon. Easy, right? No big deal. So let's build Moonar 1. Once you launch, you'll have four days to complete your objective and return home as we are short on snacks. Why don't we get us started? So again, we will be restarting the mission. We will be hitting start. And we are off. We are once again starting in the VAB and we are building Moonar 1. So why don't we take a look at my Moonar 1. A uh, bit of a curious choice, I think, for the name. Kind of missing the more obvious Kerpalo 11 for this particular mission. But nevertheless, here it is. You can see it is quite a bit bigger than anything we have built thus far. And in fact, it's not nearly as big as it could be because if you look here, well, we have access to a lot of parts this time, not nearly as restricted as we have in the past. And that includes the ginormous, uh, let's see if I can find some here, like these guys here, the Kerberdyne S4 parts. These are the five meter parts. I mean, these are huge. You could build something that is absolutely monstrous if you wanted to, but I did not. <laughs> I built something that's a little bit more uh, in constraint and there are no weight constraints. So go nuts if you want to there are those some parts constraints so let's take a look at some of the parts we that we have to have on this thing we have to have the mark 1-3 command pod the Munar excursion module or the mem we'll get to that short shortly enough the sm25 service module which is right here that you can cram full of stuff if you wanted to except i didn't <laughs> mine is completely empty so i put it on there because it is required but it is serving no purpose and it's going to be ditched with the lifter. Uh, you need the Clampatron Jr. docking port and you need the LT-1 landing struts. The other thing you need to make sure of, we're going to be going with two vessels and if you want two vessels, you would like to have two pilots and the bully boys here love to kill, kick Valentina out of the mix. So do check that. So sorry, Bob, you're out. Valentina, you are in. Uh, other than that, we are ready to go. Okay, Moonar 1 ready. That's certainly an interesting spacecraft. I'm sure it'll do fine, though. Nothing to worry about. I hope you're ready to embark on an amazing adventure. Will your Kerbal crew be eaten by Moonar monsters? Will your lander bounce off the surface? You did build a lander, right? While everything will everything explode in a magnificent money-wasting fireball? Let's find out. Your objective is to launch Moonar 1 into a circular orbit, transfer to the moon, and circularize at 33-kilometer Moonar orbit. What are you waiting for? Let's make history. Indeed, do. Let's get started. So, SAS on, throttle up, and let's go. Are off. As you can see, we are leaving from the actual KSC, so we will be going into an equatorial orbit, unlike some of our previous missions where we were launching from the alternative launch site. So that will make our transfer out to the moon, well, much more routine. And we are going to be going into a 100 by 100 orbit. That is going to be our objective. No accuracy um, multiplier this time. Instead, there's a time multiplier. Okay, we are at just about 90 kilometers. Going to cut this at just under 100. A little bit more. That's pretty good. All right. Uh, yeah, there is a time multiplier of 1.5 for getting it into orbit in less than 10 minutes, which quite frankly is 
I don't know what you were doing if it took you more than 10 minutes to get yourself into low orbit. Up at the front here, you can see I've taken, uh, I'm using the launch escape system. I really, I really like it. Um, you know, it's there for aborting purposes, but quite frankly, I really put it on there because it looks cool. Uh, I used a fairing here and I have my docking port under the fairing and I'm using the interstage nodes built into the fairing to mount this a little bit forward. Speaking of which, we can now get rid of that. There we go, and there goes our fairing. You can see our docking port. Yeah. Mentioned accuracy is not a big deal, but you do want to kind of go for what we can get. Okay, let's finish this off. Boom, that should do her. And we're just going to wait here for confirmation. There we go, there's our 100 kilometer orbit. So we are now ready to make our transfer out to the moon. Uh, but what we gotta do first is set ourselves up for that. So, stage once again. And we will put on RCS and nudge ourselves forward just a little bit. There we go, you can see our lander underneath there. Got this set up kind of Apollo style. Actually the first, control from here, that's what I need to do. <laughs> the first time I did this, I didn't set this up really Apollo style. I find that not necessarily the easiest way spin this around um, to do these moon landings. I actually built just one big giant command module and put landing legs on it and landed it. <laughs> That's all I did. Alright, let's start moving towards our target. There we go. And I'm just gonna, you can see there's a, oops, a uh, decoupler here in our way. Actually, I'm gonna come this way. Oh, we should put our lights on too. My goodness, I put in all these lights. You should use them. Um, I found the staging easier when I put a decoupler in there. I know you can just do it with the docking ports, but I don't know, I found it easier. I do, though, have to give it a little bit of a nudge out of the way. I should do it, so nudge up, put it back on the target. Oh, it moved to the side anyway. And, oh, come on, you can do it. You want to dock. <laughs> there we go, we are good. Okay, so, I'm gonna turn off the lights again. Um, there is no solar generation on this. The only generation is coming from our engine and I did pack a fuel cell in here in case I needed it, but I'm hoping not to use it. I, I got one single gigantic, the big 2.5 meter battery that has 4,000 units of electrical energy in there, so hopefully that should be okay. But in the meantime, let's stage again. One more time. One more time. I think that's it. Let's see, put an RCS back away. We are free here. Good stuff. Okay, so let's set up our moon encounter, which, unlike some of the previous ones we've done most recently, is pretty routine. As you can notice, uh, probably doing, uh, doing something a little bit differently, keeping track of the score. I find the scoring kind of confusing with this, so I thought maybe it would help if I kind of kept the score going live up here at the top left so that uh, you can see exactly how the score is being calculated. Okay, that's 16 second burn time, certainly not right. There we go, 57 seconds, so we'll call this at around, well, we'll punch it at 30 seconds, that seems good. Got here, uh, one of our new engines here, this is the REJ10 Wolfhound liquid fuel engine. Really nice engine, I like the really big gigantic bell on it, really looks, really looks the part. Okay, let's punch it, there we go. So again, we're going for a 33 by 33 orbit about the moon. There are actually no points for achieving this particular orbit, but you don't go on to the next phase of the mission unless you accomplish this. 
One thing I should also mention is, unlike many, this seems to be inconsistent with the with the missions, but some missions you can save and then revert back to previous saves, and some missions you cannot. This is one of the ones in which you cannot. So there's no way to save your progress, and then if you mess up, just to go back to a previous save, uh, you have to restart the mission all over again. So something for you to be aware of. Again, no, well, no points, so there's no points for accuracy, clearly. We just got to make Gene happy with us. Okay, that, sh that should be good enough. Let's, oh, there he is. Prepare for landing. Come in, Moonar 1. Everyone at the KSC is totally psyched right now. We're transmitting the landing coordinates most favorable for your first landing attempt. Land at the target area will be in touch when you've set down. So, we have ourselves a land and we're supposed to go down here. This is what I mean about these superfluous uh, inclination changes. This makes really no sense. If, I'm, if they knew we were going to land here, we should have come into an inclined orbit, not into this um, equatorial orbit, but that's what it is. Um, you got two hours to get down there, which frankly is not that difficult and if you get down there in two hours or you land that's a thousand points if you get down there in two hours it's another 1.5 multiplier so i'm just gonna well actually what am i doing we're not gonna land this whole thing of course we have to transfer our crew uh so transfer clue crew ah valentina they're trying to kick you off the mission <laughs> You're the one who gets the land. So Valentina will be our Neil, and our Buzz will be Bill. Bill is our Buzz. Jebediah is set in the Michael Collins role of riding around in the command module. Oh! I just realized something. I am very sorry, Bill, but somehow Bill did not get himself aboard. Bill, what are you doing now? How far away? Oh, we, we still got time. Bill, get over there. How did that happen? Did I just miss... Oh, I think I somehow missed a button. That's okay. We're still close enough. <laughs> get aboard, Bill. Whoa, 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 whoa. There's the hatch. And get aboard. All right, all right. Descent time. <laughs> all right. Uh, let's see here. We'll put you onto the retrograde vector. Well, why don't we extend our landing gears while we're at it? And we'll talk a little bit about our little lander here. This is featuring, as you can see, the, what is it called here? It is the Mooner Excursion Module, of course, the MEM. A really nice part. First of all, it certainly does look the part, has uh, integrated in RCS, so that's kind of nice. So I need a little bit more RCS thrusters, which I only use for docking, not for landing. Uh, but what I really like about it is it is only a 1.875 meter part, so that means it fits really nicely inside those 2.5 meter fairings. This fuel tank is also a one point uh, five, uh, 875 meter part and this I really like these are these stru they give you these structural tubes they give them in all kinds of uh, diameters you can also extend the length of the skirt to a variety of different lengths and what's really nice about them is inside there you can see I got enough room to tuck in a, another fuel can uh, some more of these little spherical basketball like fuels uh, tuck the engine kind of in there it, uh, I Tap some lights in here too. So um, these uh, structural tubes are great, and again, they come in all of the different various diameters, um, and you can extend the lengths of them too. Really, really nice. Okay, we're coming up here on our landing, 65 kilometers away. You do have a 50 kilometer radius that you need to be kind of within, which is clearly easy, and there's once again no accuracy bonus we just have to be down there within two hours of achieving our orbit you can see we're at 41 minutes since this thing is undocked and it only undocked a couple of minutes after we achieved our orbit so that is all pretty easy peasy uh, this thing has a ton of delta v in it because it's such a small little vessel 
was one of the advantages. Best slow down here, get close. And remember, with no no save points, if I mess this up, oh, I should put my lights on for goodness sakes. If I mess this up, that's it. But I think I'm good. There we go. SAS off. We are down. Time to moonwalk. Well done, Mooner One. You landed on the moon and you're still alive. That's great. I mean, we knew you could do it. You are cleared to perform an EVA and go for a walk. Explore to your heart's content, but don't fall into a crevice. Wait. Also instead... Oh, Walt, oh, sorry, I said that, wait, Walt also insisted that we plant a flag somewhere to claim the moon for Kerbal Kine, just in case Lathe turns out to be an inhabited by a spacefaring species too. Okay, so let's actually get out there. So we shall extend our ladder here. Okay, and there is 15... 100 points. Now, I've had... Let's see, it's a little bit glitchy here. Can we let go and grab again? Uh-oh, that doesn't look good. Come on, Val. No, no. Oh, Val, you did it! Awesome. Thought it was going to be embarrassing. No embarrassments there. Awesome sauce. Okay, let's plant ourselves the flag. Plant flag. This is 1,500 points. Flag plant. All right, this is Moon R1. 1,500 points for me. Okay, let's get ourselves back. Oh wait, claiming the moon. That's one small flag for Kerbal, for a Kerbal. One giant flag for Kerbal Kyder. I mean, that's one small step for a Kerbal. One giant step for Kerbal Kind. Isn't that what I said? Giant flag. Oh my gosh, I can't read. <laughs> I kind of ruined the moment, didn't I? I'm just too excited. Once you're done exploring, it's time to launch, orbit the moon, transfer back to Kerbin, and splash down at the supply coordinates. Turns out you might need a swimsuit after all. Okay, let's get back. Now, there is a time constraint, so maybe that I'm going to use that as an excuse. I was thinking about the fact I have 30 minutes to get back into orbit, but really quite frankly ah uh, come on that's not going to be difficult so in you go we won't worry about getting buzz i mean bill sorry bill you're gonna stay right where you are get our flag up we'll get ready now any orbit i think i think it needs to be a 33 kilometer orbit but really any orbit will do um because we're at quite a way south we're going to be going into an inclined orbit but i don't believe that that matters but what we're gonna, what I'll do, we're just gonna go, we're just gonna go east. So, off we go, pitch over, east, and you can go right over like this without a problem. It's so nice not having sending without an atmosphere, and we're ascending until our apoapsis gets up to 33 kilometers. Actually, I'm wondering if... Now, we'll go with 33 kilometers. I'm not sure if it has to be 33 kilometers, but we'll go with 33 kilometers. Good enough. All right. We're going to ride this out to Apoapsis. Now, we need to obviously rendezvous with Jeb in the command module, so we're going to circularize, and as long as we can circularize within 30 minutes, which is going to be pretty easy, we're 7 minutes from Apoapsis, uh, that will satisfy a 1.5 times multiplier. But then we need to do the rendezvous, and you can either, well, it's easier to get back to Kerbin from an equatorial orbit, so we're going to try and rendezvous with uh, Jeb in here. So we're going to, again, make the inclination change, the superfluous inclination change, and meet up with Jeb. But first, we need to get our orbit. Okay, that is 33 by 33. We need to get our inclination to be the same and 
Okay, let's see what that looks like. Periapsis, yeah, a little over 11 kilometers. That is fine. Now, let's set Moonar 1 as our target. And just do this till it looks right. There we go. Uh, so, half kilometer separation, about 40 minutes. Awesome. You know, while we are so close, I never did show you the cockpit view inside this thing. It's, it's pretty nice, I think. Model, I like these um, little triangular. This is just like the Lem had, really. Um, and they're down facing little windows. So, uh, yeah, pretty cool. And kabonk. All right. So, obviously, we need to transfer Val and Bill back. This time, I'll make sure that Bill will go. <laughs> Work. Two. Okay, fine. Oh, wait. I think it's one. I think that was lowering and raising the antenna. That is good. And now we need to get ourselves back to Kerbin. Again, a routine exercise. Well, except for one small detail. And that detail is, let's focus in on Kerbin, is that our landing site, our target, and this time there is an accuracy bonus on this, so we do want to land here, is way down here, uh, well south of the equator, and coming out of, well, from the moon, which has an inclination of zero in around Kerbin, uh, we're going to require, again, another superfluous inclination change but what I'm gonna do how I'm gonna accomplish that is by actually first getting my cells on my way to Kerbin but we're also gonna use Kerbin's atmosphere to help slow us down quite a lot to achieve the parking orbit we want around Kerbin before we get ready to make our descent and get ready to make our burn Oh, let's do it. There we go. We are off. Goodbye, the little lander. You did a good job. Whoop. Let's get ready to go with about 45 kilometers. That puts us into the atmosphere, but not too deep in the atmosphere that things should explode. And then we'll say goodbye to the moon. And we are going to have to make an inclination change. And I've toyed with the idea, is it better to try and make the inclination change while I'm making my uh, Kerbin injection burn, getting away from the moon? Oh, there we go. But I think it's better to actually make my inclination change, well, right about now. Now, as we are entering into the atmosphere here, keep this on the surface retrograde vector. One thing I do want to draw some attention to the fact is there is a hard limit on how fast. You might have noticed the mention at the very beginning, the, the note at the very beginning before our launch that we had four days or we're going to run out of snacks. And if you run out of snacks, this is a hard fail. So you will fail the mission if it takes more than four days. You can see now we're almost at two and a half days. Still comfortable, but uh, you don't want to spend all the time in the world doing, you know, arrow break after arrow break. You do want to kind of do this in just one big quick orbit. So I'm watching uh, my apoapsis, watching my time to periapsis. And we're going to be using a little bit of engine thrust here as well. I'd like to end up in about a 100 by 100 orbit. Again, I got quite a lot of fuel to handle both the circuit. I probably could have even gotten away with the circularization without doing this arrow braking trick. But, uh, you know, waste not, want not. And the extra bit of fuel might be useful when it comes to trying hitting my target. Don't forget as well that we are also, here, let's start burning. We're at right around periapsis. Don't want to burn too much. Worst case scenario, you burn or you overcook this and you uh, don't leave the atmosphere. That would not be good. 
I'll just cut that for now. Yeah, it's not dropping that quick. Should be fine. Keep in mind as well that uh, our landing site is not going to likely be underneath our orbit once we finish all this. So we're going to have to time warp a bit to um, to get our our uh, our landing site under our orbit. But that should take at maximum half a Kerbin day, which is three hours. So we should be good. All right, so that's a hundred by hundred orbit with an inclination of just over 44 degrees. Let's see what our situation is here. Uh, Kerbin rotates this way. Okay, we're getting we're getting pretty close. Unfortunately, as mentioned, I cannot save and take multiple attempts at this. This is a one shot dealio, but. Let's uh, put this on retrograde and go for it. It's going to be what it's going to be. If it's gold, it's gold. If it's not, it's not. Again, I feel like I'm coming short or going long. And whether I feel like I'm going long or not, it doesn't make a difference now because we are out of fuel. There we go. Let's ditch this. Ditch. I'm ditching that because that is heavier than the command module. You can see it moving away because it carries itself through the atmosphere. I am clearly overshooting. But am I within 70% accuracy of that? If you land anywhere, you still complete the mission. There's still that. But it's getting near the landing zone that gets you your final uh, 2,000 points. There is, by the way, also just a 2,000 point completion bonus. So hopefully I'm going to get 2,000 points for the 70% accuracy and 2,000 points for the completion, and that will put me over the top. We will find out momentarily. I do have my doubts. Here it comes. Gold! All right! And that's 10,188, so that definitely was good enough. That was within the 70% accuracy. I am very excited because, honestly, I wasn't expecting that. So there we go. Gold for me. Everybody is happy. All my Kerbals survived. And I thank you for watching. And I hope to see you again next time. Oh, a new part here just before we start our burn. This is the Wolfhound REJ10 liquid fuel engine. Really nice orbital engine. Let's see, I'll make sure I don't miss my doobie doob here. Okay, let's hit it. There we go. Like I said, really nice orbital. Oh my god! <laughs>